Hi! In the following tutorial, we will be discussing the anterior pituitary release of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone as it pertains to the female. Now, the functions of these hormones, regardless of gender, is to secrete androgens as well as to produce gamete production. We're going to begin by diagramming the hormones that are related to luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. To begin we have to consider the relationship between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland. So this area here is to represent my hypothalamus and the floor of the brain and this is my pituitary. This will be the anterior portion and this will be the posterior portion. We are considering the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. This will be abbreviated big G, little n, big R, big H. When gonadotropin releasing hormone is released by the hypothalamus, it travels along blood vessels to the anterior pituitary, where it stimulates the release of both luteinizing hormone, abbreviated LH, and follicle stimulating hormone, which we will abbreviate as FSH. This is going to target the ovaries in the female. Luteinizing hormone itself is what is ultimately responsible for ovulation. And at the same time, it helps increase gamete production. Gametes in the female are referred to as ova. Follicle stimulating hormone is also going to target the ovaries and it is going to be responsible for producing androgens. Follicle stimulating hormone also works to stimulate the follicles themselves, meaning that it also helps produce gametes in the ovary. Now a female cycle is characterized by changes in both luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone, as well as estrogen and progesterone levels over the course of 28 days. So the androgen that is produced via follicle stimulating hormone is estrogen and we will see increasing amounts of estrogen in the first 14 days. As it turns out, elevated amounts of estrogen act to reinforce the secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone. This is what we refer to as a positive feedback loop. So over the course of 14 days, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone start to increase, which ultimately causes the release of more estrogen, which is going to have a stimulatory effect on the hypothalamus to cause more gonadotropin releasing hormone. And over the course of the month, if we were to look at a graph of circulating amounts, we would see that these hormones would be climbing. And these hormones are going to climb until ultimately they hit a threshold at which ovulation will occur. Now ovulation is going to be the release of a mature follicle from the support cells in the ovary. And the support cells in the ovary that remain are going to be called the corpus luteum. Support cells that remain. Are the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum has a life expectancy of approximately 14 days. This accounts for the 14 days post ovulation before a female gets her cycle. So the corpus luteum cells themselves begin to increase progesterone and this increasing progesterone secretion 
acts as a negative feedback loop, which causes the release of gonadotropin inhibiting hormone from the hypothalamus. So this describes the basic feedback loops that occur during the 28-day cycle of a non-pregnant female. Gonadotropin releasing hormone is secreted by the hypothalamus down through the blood work portal system to the anterior pituitary, where luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone will be produced. Both of these hormones are going to act together to increase gamete production and follicle maturation. Follicle stimulating hormone will also cause the follicular cells in the ovary to produce estrogen and as estrogen levels increase this reinforces the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus. This keeps going. It's a runaway horse until the follicle completely matures and ovulation happens. When ovulation occurs, the support cells that remain in the ovary that once supported the gamete production now are going to be known as the corpus luteum. It's the empty nest syndrome. The corpus luteum will begin secreting elevating amounts of progesterone, which acts to negatively feedback and release gonadotropin inhibiting hormone from the hypothalamus at which point luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone will no longer be released. For these hormones, we again want to consider whether they are protein-based or lipid-based, as this indicates the relative mechanism by which they work on cells. Androgens themselves, estrogen and progesterone in females, as well as testosterone in males, are lipid-based hormones. This means that they can be absorbed across the skin and in fact, hormone replacement therapy for women often implements both estradiols and progesterones into a cream which is then rubbed on thin skin areas such as the back of the knees and the crook of the elbow for absorption into the body. Pathologies that may be associated with hyposecretion of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone include having irregular periods, and hyposecretion of luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone may also manifest as reduced or even absent follicle production. This completes the tutorial for luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone effects in the human female. For more information on the effects of these hormones in the male, please see the corresponding tutorial.